The significant investment in equipment from China, particularly since 2023 and this year 2024, has significantly lifted the equipment market side. Some of these investments are independent of market demand. Hi everyone, my name is Clockton. I'm Senior Director at Sammy's Market Intelligence. It's my pleasure to share some of our market outlook and forecast with the audience. So the total semiconductor equipment market uh, exceeded 100 billion US uh, in 2021 and has maintained in the range of 100 billion to 110 billion over the past three years. Last year in 2023, uh, while semiconductor sales experienced a double digit decline, uh, the capital equipment market showed resilience with only 1% decline due to higher than expected spending uh, in China uh, for 2024, uh, the equipment market expected to grow by 3.4% uh, to reach uh, 109 billion. Wafer fab equipment is projected to grow by 3% to 98 billion. Test equipment is forecast to increase 7% to reach uh, 6.7 billion. And assembly and packaging equipment is set to rebound 10% to 4.4 billion. Uh, looking ahead for next year, 2025, the semiconductor equipment market expected to experience a significant rebound with a projected 16% growth. This growth is anticipated to be widespread, with double-digit increase across all segments, propelling the market to surpass $129 billion and set a new records. Among key segments, uh, Foundry and Logic are expected to show a moderated decline of 3% this year, due to a spending mix changes between mature no and advanced logic no investment. Foundry and logic segment is forecast to grow 10% next year to 63 billion, driven by investment in advanced and logic capacity and the introduction of gate all around the new device architectures. DRAM equipment sales are projected to grow strongly at 24% and 12% in 2024 and 2025 respectively, supported by surging demand for high bandwidth memory, for AI deployment, capacity expansion, and ongoing technology migrations. For NAND flash market, uh, the equipment spending in, for NAND flash expected to remain flat this year, as NAND flash suppliers focusing on maximizing their fab utilization instead of investing in new tools. Looking ahead for 2025, we anticipated that the investment will be primarily directly toward technology migration, driven by strong demand for enterprise SSD and high-density high SSD. Uh, SEMI published a quarterly market report called World Fab Forecast, which monitors global semiconductor fab activities. This report tracks new fab investment, capacity expansion, technology capability, location, construction, and production timeline, and many more. Uh, as of the second quarter of this year, we monitor over 1,500 semiconductor fabs globally. The latest fab forecasts indicate that uh, there are more than 100 fabs scheduled to commence production between 2023 to 2027, and which includes over 85 new 300 million fabs and about 20 new 200 million fabs. Uh, in terms of regions, China stands out with the largest number of new fabs scheduled to come online by 2027. However, it's not all about the number of new fabs. Uh, the investment amount and the technology capability are also critical. When we analyze the fab investment amount by region, we expect to see some significant changes in the next few years. China, Korea, Taiwan has always been the largest three regions in terms of fab investment, and we expect the trend will continue for these top three regions. However, the fab investment in the US, Europe, Japan, Southeast Asia, and the rest of the world will show a much higher growth rate 
compared to top three regions. Specifically, the U.S. is projected to invest over 30 billion in semiconductor fab in year 2027, which is on par with Taiwan and Korea in the same year. Um, the significant investment in equipment from China, particularly in, since 2023 and this year, 2024, has significantly lifted the equipment market size. However, it has also distorted the actual market demand to some extent. Uh, when we examine the revenue share of the top four major wafer fab equipment companies' revenue share from China in the past few quarters, we can see that China's revenue share has increased significantly from 20% to 40% or even close to 50% of the revenue over the past four quarters. Our observation is that some of these investments are independent of market demand. And the substantial spending from China is driven by a continued expanding, expansion of mature nail capacity and pull in order due to the potential further tightening of export control. And we do expect that such high investment will normalize somewhat in the next few years as Chinese device makers will need to uh, digest uh, the pull in capacity investment uh, in this year. Southeast Asia has been a popular destination for electronic and semiconductor assembly in the past few decades. Uh, the recent geopolitical tension as well as the desire from electronic OEMs and fabulous companies to diversify away from China or even uh, from Taiwan has created great opportunity for ASEAN countries to benefit from the reshuffling of the microelectronic supply chain. Uh, countries like Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, just to name a few, offer a very competitive cost, skilled workforce, and supportive government policies, making them a very attractive destination for semiconductor manufacturing and assembly. So Southeast Asia government are investing heavily in infrastructures and providing incentive to attract semiconductor companies such as building industrial parks, improving logistics, and offering tax benefits. So it, it is expected that there will be increased investment in this region, not only in assembly and test, but also in front-end chip fabrications. I think overall, Southeast Asia is emerging as a key player in the global semiconductor industry with a strong growth trajectory in the semiconductor manufacturing sectors. India has made significant strides in recent years to become an increasing important electronic manufacturing base. Now, the country is aiming to enter the semiconductor manufacturing sectors as well. The India government has launched several initiatives to boost domestic semiconductor manufacturing, including a, a 10 billion incentive schemes under the India Semiconductor Mission, ISM. This includes subsidies for setting up front-end fabs and assembly and test facilities. Uh, so far, there are two concrete fab projects has been announced. Uh, the first one is the joint venture between PSMC from Taiwan and Tata Electronics. And the other is the joint venture between Tower Jazz and Adani. Both projects are aiming for setting up more than one 300 millimeter fabs. Additionally, several projects related to assembly and tests have started construction or have been announced. Uh, India's huge domestic market at, and its increasing share of global electronic production will drive the demand for semiconductors and potentially outpacing other regions in terms of semiconductor demands. India is also forming strategic partnership with countries like US and Japan to enhance its semiconductor supply chain and technologies. Furthermore, India has a large talent pool that the semiconductor industry requires, 
especially in the IC design segment. These factors will collectively boost the development of India's semiconductor ecosystem. And the success of the, our first Semicon India show proved the potential and the importance of the India market. I think the short answer is Korea's semiconductor supply chain is highly competitive and plays a critical role in the global semiconductor industry. Korea's device makers such as Samsung and SK Hynix are global leader in memory chip production and holds a dominant position in the DRAM and NAND flash market. Uh, in the AI era, Korea companies also plays a critical role in supplying high bandwidth memory chips. And in addition to memory, uh, Korea semiconductors are also leading the way in system semiconductors, image sensors, and advanced packaging technology, just to name a few. Uh, apart from the chip fabrication, Korean company also has expanded their influences in the semiconductor equipment and material markets. Uh, they not only supply to domestic customers, but are also aggressively engaged in the international market. So combining all these trends, Korea semiconductor supply chain has the rare combination of equipment, material, chip production, packaging, and equally or more importantly, a strong brand in the end device electronic market, such as smartphone, automotive, home appliance, and more.